that are mixed. Let's cut to the wide real quick. Hello folks, welcome to today's episode of The Joy of Pancakes. I think this is episode 51. I really gotta change the camera angle there. <laughs> Let me sit. Welcome to today's episode of The Joy of Pancakes, episode 51. We've done 51 of these. I can't even remember when the first one was, but whew, it's crazy how they stack up like that. Um, it's pretty exciting. I feel like uh, as we move past that, that 50 mark, we're gonna start getting even better and better with this stream. And, Having more and more fun with it, getting more people excited about it. So, uh, how you doing? My name is Dan, aka Daniel James Drake, on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. AKA Dr. Dan the Pancake Man, uh, the co-founder of Dan Cakes, the world's first professional pancake art company. And The Joy of Pancakes is a stream series in which I, Dan Drake, sit down and make some cool pancake art while we hang out. Um, I'm always changing the rules on this. Like sometimes I take requests from the chat and sometimes I have something specific I want in mind. Uh, today, if you look at the title of the stream, you'll see that I said uh, Prince Zagreus from the, uh, the hit video game Hades by indie developer Supergiant Games. If you've been watching the stream series, then you'll know that I'm a big fan of this game, and I've made a couple of these pancakes um, already. In the last couple of weeks, I actually got a couple of responses from some of the voice actors from the game, which if you are a fan of the game, you'll know that part of what makes it so special is its voice acting. And... Um, so I've actually got the chance, I'm going to be mailing um, Avalon Penrose and Courtney Vines, the voice actors for Meg and Dusa and Aphrodite, the pancakes I made on the stream a couple weeks ago. Uh, and so today I was like, well, you know who else I really respect and care about on the Supergiant staff is Darren Korb. He's the voice actor of the protagonist, Zagreus. He also does the musical arrangements, the compositions and everything for all of the Supergiant games. And his work is amazing. It's one of the things people consistently point to as making Supergiant stand out. Um, and I was like, hey, let me make Zagreus and see if Darren Korb wants me to send him a pancake of Zagreus' face. So, you know, we'll see how that works. Um, hey everybody, I see y'all in the chat. Zemi Wolfs, Sky Kid, Maya. Good to see you, Maya. I haven't seen you in the chat for a little while. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm gonna hop up. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my overhead camera here and get started. I've already got my reference image pulled up and mirrored. I'm more prepared than I usually am. Boop. Oh, shoot. One moment. Ha cha cha. Ha da 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 da. I gotta put that windowed projector so I can see. What's going on while I'm sitting at the griddle? Do you like my song? It compensates for my lack of preparation. There we go. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. We are on the overhead. That should be set to automatically rotate. So every time, every now and then, when I look up, it should be different. Let me show y'all. This is Prince Zagreus. This is the uh, reference image I have for him. Pulled up on this here tablet. Um, I may not try and get the, the floaty laurel things flying off of his head there. Um, I'm probably just gonna focus on this part. Uh, I might get a little bit of the, the Cerberus collar there. I really like the art style. The art is done by a woman named Gen Z, which I, it's a funny name when I try and talk to my wife. Oh, Gen Z's so good at art. Gen Z's so funny. She's like, well, you, the whole generation? <laughs> like, um, her stuff is really impressive and uh, I really like her use of like heavy contrast. It's very comic book. Super iconic. Um, howdy, folks. Hey, Tawny. Anna, hi, bye. I hope you have a good day. Hey, Wella. I'm sorry you haven't been feeling the greatest lately, Maya. I, uh, I, I, I know... I relate on some level. I was just monologuing to myself on my phone last night about my weird mental health lately. <clears throat> Spending a lot too much of my energy and time anxious lately. One of the reasons I love doing the Joy of Pancakes is because I get the opportunity to hop in here and make some zen pretty stuff that people like there, out there like to see. So, Zagreus. Here we go. So, follow the stream. You'll know that I do a lot of, I try to talk through my technique sometimes. Uh, squeeze control. These little squeeze bottles here all have colored pancake batter in them and the number one way to make sure that you can get really good at doing brush strokes and stuff with pancake batter is to practice squeeze control. X, uh, apply suction to the bottle, air comes out, and it lets you start and stop your line work a lot easier. But let's get into it. This is a very small aperture. This guy 
I did. Did the presence assist for the team? Present. Um, you know, Skylar, I actually haven't opened those envelopes. I saw them in here earlier on a table um, addressed to the Dancakes team. Kind of wanted to open them when the whole team was here. I like to start on the eyes, because as they say, the eyes have it. Um, if you get the eyes of a character more or less accurate, everything else tends to fall into place. You can use those to build proportional shapes all around them. All right, let's see. Bridge of his nose has a little bit of a knock. I should probably get my red out for that, huh? He's got this really sort of, um, Zagreus has mismatched eyes. Uh, there's a word for that, I think. I can't think of the word right now, but um, he basically has uh, his left eye he got from his dad, Hades, the god of the dead, and his right eye he got from his mom. Uh, and so one of his eyes is, has a black instead of a they're black they're not white Get there. It's all about layering. So you want to take your time. You want to make sure you get all the details in there as best you can. Fun solving it, Dr. Dan. Uh oh, did you send us a riddle, Skylar? I'm excited to see it. Let's see. Do I have. Where's my tiny. There it is. playing through well I, I've already played through Hades and I think I basically got my fill I might go back to it one day um, once your your new dialogue options start to slow down um, I mean there's still lots to do and lots to collect and see I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff that I haven't gotten yet but um, I completed the main story got to the quote-unquote true ending through her own run of Hades. So she watched me play it. Uh, and then and now she's playing it for herself. And one of the things I really like is the, the accessibility functions that they put into it. Like, Hannah doesn't play video games as much as I do. Um, or that's not necessarily true. She doesn't, she doesn't play the kinds of video games that I play. Um, like really heavily action-based, you know, combat-focused, God of War type games. And so for a game to 
be built in such a way that she can enjoy it. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um, it sort of scales to your skill level without ever feeling, I guess, what's the word? Um, too easy or cheap about it. Very impressive. From a, a game developer point of view. I think it's gonna have a, a last I think it's gonna have a lasting impact on the games industry as a whole. I think there's a lot of people who are gonna be inspired to follow their game design passions. Now that they see that there's a company out there that can make really, really good games without, I guess, abusing their staff. You know. Too long right there. That's a little better. I don't think that. I make his mouth too big. That goes. Yeah, okay. It was smaller. Yeah, I think that's a little bit closer. Wrong. Okay, he's got a really defined cheekbone straight line right here. Goes down just below his nostril. One over here is slightly less defined. There we go. The hair. Let's see, same thing over here. I think that needs to be a little bit more concave as well. I'm trying to get these details as sort of accurate as we can. There's limitations in the medium, so you can't do everything, but you can do a lot.
too wide, maybe? Not long enough? Let's try it one more time. Jaws are always the hardest thing. At least when I'm trying to... So I don't have any guidelines. I don't have any... Any practice lines. I just kind of got to do it and then erase it if I didn't get it right. And then keep doing it and then keep erasing it. a little bit better it's also jaw lines are very important to the I guess the they make a difference in like how the character looks or feels like that's a bit too his jaw is not quite that widely squared and so I gotta fix it That's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but I like that more. I think that fits the character a bit more. Okay. So let me make some more neck. Sometimes I. I was gonna say, I, sometimes I uh, like carve the neck in a little bit more than I think it should be, just because it uh, tends to make the, the characters look more. I don't know. I think it's better for the neck to be too thin than for it to be too thick. It makes a big difference in the way that a character appears. myself enough room to really comfortably get all that detail in here. How y'all doing out there, huh? How y'all doing out in the out in the world, out in the meat space? Is everything going okay? I know that's a lot to ask right now in this year of our Lord, 2020. But uh, yeah, I'm doing okay, I think. Did you have a favorite battle space? You talking about in Hades? Like a favorite arena or whatever? So that's what you're asking about. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, really, it would depend almost entirely on the build, which I think is... One of the cool things about the game, like there's so many different ways to build your character during a run, and by the the nature of the way the game is built, you're incentivized to try them all. Um, yeah, that was really cool. I don't know if there's any specific fight. I like getting really good at the Hydra, because when you fight the Bone Hydra, if you can do it quickly. 
Why do I not like this now that I've outlined the jaw? This feels too angled up. I think that's a little better. What is wrong with this? Why am I not happy with this all of a sudden? Now that I've added a shadow to this. Once I get the ears and everything added, so maybe I'll just keep on going. Great. It's got such a great soundtrack. It's getting lost in the sauce here a little bit. I hope this looks good. Sometimes I'm in a, when I'm in a bit of a brain fog headspace, you know, not getting enough sleep or too dependent on caffeine and not drinking enough coffee or any number of ways that I can like. accidentally be bad at art. <laughs> Size are too big to be in the face. I think his ears could go a little lower. Forehead too big. Maybe that threw everything else off. Let's see if I can fix it.
good. Excuse me. I burped. to do me like this. Definitely appreciate having another perspective. Trying to see it though is the trick. I suppose I should have made sure I had the right colors for his hair. I need a really dark gray. I need. Hmm. I don't want to use black because there's definitely black in there. Ah, jeez. I didn't mix a really dark gray, and I don't know if I have the right colors to achieve that. But I didn't mix extra batter today. So I just figured I'd be great. I'd be fine. whatever I'll use I'll use the batter I have I'll make it work usually when I do that I mean sometimes it doesn't go so well but usually when I do like I just come in and use reuse batter without mixing additional batter um, sometimes the color limitations force me to learn things about you know color theory and composition and it's usually worthwhile for me not to care too much and as we always say Look at this anime. Look at this anime boy. That's way too big. Ah, jeez, Rick. Austin the sauce, I see. How am I gonna fix this? I'm just gonna do it like this. So that's actually supposed to, so that, I made all three of those points too big. Got a little bit too into his anime-ness. I'm a child. Oh yeah, well, I could. I can totally, like, I'm capable of mixing the additional thing. I just haven't done it yet. That was my point. We don't have a lot of spare batter to mess it up. So when I get to that point, I will probably do that. Just mix a very small amount of the very specific gray I need. I trailed off before I said that. Ah, jeez. What a day. They're just not going to have... It's going to be Zagreus without a mouth today. Mouthless Zag. even 
be acceptable. Zoom in on that nonsense. That's as close as it gets. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. I don't need it. Who cares? I'm almost happy with that. Shadow lines up in there. This is very uninteresting to look at, it seems, so far, right? Because uh, it's mostly black on a black grill. But don't worry, we're going to get into the colors here soon. It'll be real neat. Gen Z highlights. I really like I find very interesting and distinctive about Gen Z's art style. She uses all these peculiar pinks and oranges and greens to do these tiny little highlights on characters. Um, and it's just a couple, just here and there. Very uh, uh, reserved, I guess, with the use of them. But they're it's like little little splashes of color that I probably would not have thought to have put there myself. And it's a really interesting thing that sort of sets her art style apart, at least in my opinion. mostly that dark gray color that I haven't mixed yet. I think 
do have white. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put white in a bottle, smaller bottle here. Y'all can see what I'm doing. This is, this is a white fill. I've been using this for filling behind pancakes and outlining them because it, uh, it's, it works better with our freeze drying uh, and resining preservation process. So I've got white, totally white, not plain, but white batter, and I've got gray. And so the thing is, is that what I have to keep in mind is that white batter, the white gel color, does weird things to the batter and makes it invariably cook a lot brighter than the rest of the batter around it. So what I'm going to do is rather than try to mix a fresh dark gray, I'm just going to darken this gray. Um, and I'm going to add a black, a dot of black gel to this bright white color for the light gray. And that way, I don't add too much white to my dark gray because I don't want it to be that bright. One drop. So we'll see if this little idea of mine works. Let's see. I might also put a drop of blue and or purple in this darker gray. Shaking pancakes up on the string. Yeah. You can see how this one's still a lot brighter. And that's the idea. That was a single drop of black gel. Goes a long way. Smack it around so we can mix a little faster. In the middle of a stream, colors. I'm making Zagreus from Hades today. Uh, Bud Bud Weber, good to see you, friend. I think I will put a drop of purple in that. Ectothonic purple here. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see if this is to my liking. I think that'll do. I think that's it. Um, as for his lighter gray, ugh, I feel like I need to put a drop of purple in that too. Oh well. You know what? You only live once, right? So we'll put a drop of foifel into the light gray. We're going to see what this turns into. That'll do. That'll have to do. <laughs> and I'll use some kind of a combination of blues to do the brightest highlights on Zagreus's hair. But yeah, I think overall, I think this is an acceptable color combination to illustrate this handsome underworld prince boy's hair. But you don't have Fortnite pancakes. Not right now, I don't. Go onto the little patch right here. Patch right there. There. Okay. Now I will do this lighter gray color, best as I can. Find all the little highlights in Zag's hair here.
doop 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 doop. Zigzag. <laughs> Zigzag Rius. <laughs> we here all week. And forever. Is that what those are called? There's a word for them. I don't know if they mean the right word for them, but whatever. <coughs> Can I get all the hair? Yes, okay. Everything else is going to be this dark gray color. This dark gray purple. I guess his eyebrows also have just a little touch of hair gray. My hope is that when this cooks, it desaturates that purple, that dark uh, gray purple that I'm filling with this right now. Hope is that when it cooks, it, it darkens the color even more. But we'll see. I don't want it to drain too much of the color. Looks like I got all these bright yellows and reds I'm going to be using in these other details on Zag here. I'd like those to be as true to themselves as they can be. And so if this purplish gray doesn't darken too much, it's probably fine. Main thing is contrast, right? You just want to have contrast between your color zones so that the viewer can quickly decipher what the heck they're looking at. Almost all done there. Cool. <clears throat> I mixed several colors for his face here. I've got his, it looks like I'll probably be using a little bit of this. This is a little off, not perfect, but uh, I think it'll make for a nice little interesting accent. I'm gonna do these lines first.
Okay. Oh, I'm going to get a little bit of a boop. My splash is there. Hey, Lee. Good to see you, friend. Thanks for dropping in for a second. I love you too, man. Lee is our uh, printing cakes artist by Spaced Out in Phoenix. He streams with um, Idle Champions. Um, Riddle Champions over on CNE Games' Twitch channel every Friday morning. It's a lot of fun. You should go check him out. Follow him on the Twitters and all that good stuff. He's a very, very good guy and uh, shares a lot of posts about his uh, him and his little family. Very stoked for him. He is... He became a dad while he worked with us. Darker? Yeah. A little bit of shadow there. Can't really see it anywhere else for it. Um, a, little, a little dot on your nose there, buddy. Let's see. and those highlights in them ears there, bud. You sure do. You sure do. Look at all that definition. Wow. Wow. Um, okay. What, are, what, what color is that? That is a... I'm going to use this. I'm going to reuse this gray here. It looks like there's a little bit of a strange highlight color on this side of his face. I don't think this is the perfect color for it, but I think we can get away with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Life is what you can get away with. Pseudo gray. Um, okay, so now we have not quite there yet. Darker shade. Where am I going to cut him? Right there. Um, and down here.
tight, tight. Um, yeah, okay. Let's think everything else. Oh, that's a that's part of that that funny gray right there. It's a little bit of a dollop right there. Okay. together. Definitely should have put a wider aperture tip on this particular bottle, but I'm almost done now, so whatever. My wrist, though. <laughs> there we go. The old two hand squeeze here. A lot of shadow on this guy's face. Right. Let's see. Time for reds and oranges. Up in these laurels. Let's see what color really pops. It's on laurels. Still not sure if that's what they're called. Zag. Right next to Sephora. We're getting there, folks. We're getting to the fun part here. I actually really like how that, uh, that brown, how that shading on his face looks like it's turned out over there. 
All right, let's, um, I'm gonna do something a little different from what I normally do. I wanna give this a slight black outline just to make the outlines themselves a little bit firmer. This is something I used to do when I did comics a lot, and I don't know if this will work. Or look tacky or what. it'll make the image pop just a tiny bit more and it'll make all the line work look a little the detail work look a little bit more interesting try and be thin on these because there's no contrast over here i don't want to mess up the silhouette Okay. Crank that nonsense. Have Fortnite pancakes with Cuddle Team Leader. You know, I don't know if I do. I don't even know what Cuddle Team Leader is. I'll have to see that sometime. And now we wait. <clears throat> Put some of these colors away because I was, uh, for my next piece, I don't think I'm going to be taking any requests or prompts or anything like that. I think I'm just going to freestyle because yesterday, towards the end of the stream, I did that. And I just freestyled and I talked about whatever was on my mind and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. And, you know? I think that that's the whole shtick, right? I've got a good feeling, honestly, y'all. I've got a good feeling about this one. Um, it depends on if I cook it too hot, which, yeah, scale that back a little bit. Doesn't need to get that hot that fast. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it cook for a second. I want to make sure it doesn't cook too hot, but I also want to make sure that it releases from the griddle easy. Because I don't want to. One of the things that'll happen sometimes is you'll you'll get flakiness on your pancakes um, because the. I, I, I'm still not sure why it happens. I think it has something to do with the consistency of the batter. Um, but at any rate. I hate when the flakiness happens because it can really screw with the texture of your pancake. I, part of what I love about this griddle is that it has the ability to make your pancake super smooth. But if the flakiness happens, one day I'll, I'll have the epiphany and I'll figure out why it happens and then it won't happen anymore because I'll have figured it out. But, oh, you guys ever just drop coffee on the griddle in the middle of a damn live stream? I'm glad I did not spill that on the pancake. Holy Toledo. <laughs> We're doing it live. <clears throat> wow. 
Well, it certainly smells good in here now. All right. Zagreus. A little bit hotter there. Scooch these bottles out of the way. Tell your friends. Share the stream. Let folks know we're about to flip Zagreus over. This is going to be... Uh, I, at the very least, I feel good about the colors. I'm not positive if I got his face, his likeness, as accurate as I would like. I think the Meg pancake I made was really good. But this one, I don't know if I felt quite as good about it as I was drawing it, so... We will see. It is peeling pretty uh, pretty nicely. It's carving nicely. So that's a good thing. And it's not too big or heavy. It's not too heavy, so. All right, here we go. I'm gonna cut to the overhead so we can get the best shot we can. Ready, folks? Prince Zagreus of the Underworld. Three, two, one. Wow. I did change his likeness a little bit. It doesn't look exactly like the portrait I drew here, or I drew it from, but you can definitely tell who that is, I think. I made him a little prettier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really like that. That turned out nice. Oh, Gen Z's art slaps, and it works so well in pancake art. I get, I get to use so many weird colors, and uh, it's awesome. Hope Darren Corb wants it. <laughs> it's killer. Very happy with how that turned out. Happier than I thought I would be, honestly. Look at that big hair. Look at this anime boy. He's shown in Zach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Precisely. Good to see you, Jeremy. It's so pretty. Yeah. Happy with that. I'm also happy with the outline. I think that really helps the image itself pop, you know? I think that, um... That thicker black outline. This is going to be a nice piece. This is going to be a really nice piece when it's preserved and hanging up somewhere. I like that size, too. Yeah. There we go, folks. Prince Zagreus. First pancake of the day is a success. Happy with that. Happy with that. Let me grab a sheet of wax paper. I don't want him to set on the plate. He won't, he won't uh, dry or, or cool off flat if he's on the plate. So put him on a little sheet of wax paper over there. Um, let my griddle start cooling down. Turn this off. We're going to go into freestyle mode for a bit, y'all. I think I'm going to do... Oh, I'll just start drawing, and you guys can tell me if you can... If you can let me know if you think you can figure out what I'm drawing. It's not going to be very hard. I think, I think what I'm making is... Uh, something I could use, honestly. Let's see if I can make this work. Hot oh, 
water bottle, sort of. Becca, it's good to see you, friend. I haven't seen you in the chat for a while. I'm doing okay. How are you? One of the first pieces of pancake, in fact, the first, uh, well, the first pancake art design that I got any attention for. If you follow us, if you've seen any of our story, you'll have heard this. But um, one of the first pieces I ever got any attention for was a Mario mushroom pancake. And I would serve, I would make and serve these Mario mushroom pancakes at the diner I worked at as sort of a way to make better tips because I didn't make very good money. I was paying, I was paid $4.25 an hour plus tips. And even that was like a nice sort of leg up because um, server wages, uh, at least in the St. Louis area when I was a server, were... I think 265 an hour was the, the minimum that you could pay a server per hour, plus tips, you know, you were obligated to, you know, pay them uh, X amount of tips if they didn't make tips on their own, um, but, you know, bosses would always fudge that, so, like, it, it wasn't very, it was very, very low wage work, um, and so I would you know, I guess I had a bit of an incentive not to give any credence to the pull yourself up by your bootstraps narrative, but I had a bit of an incentive to try and make better tips. And so I would start, uh, I did these um, fancy smiley face pancakes, but then eventually I did a Mario mushroom pancake because I could work it into my, uh, my routine while I was making all this other food without messing myself up too much. Um, I could just throw a Mario mushroom on, on the griddle really easily. And, oh, I probably should have left room for those too. Got little dots. Get shine. I don't know if that's going to show through, but whatever. Uh, but anyway, the, I think one of the main reasons I was so drawn to serving Mario mushrooms as pancake art to folks was because of the implication that it was like a power-up, right? That it was like, it was this little, little object, so to speak. That you could consume and it would give you an extra life you know, welcome to your day go go ask your boss for a raise you got an extra life who need who, 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 whatever who cares i love the idea just the visual metaphor of giving somebody a power up and so i think that's why i'm also drawn to the idea of drawing things like potion bottles which if you haven't figured it out yet I'm making a health potion. Um, a little bit of health potion carbonation in there.
あとさ I really enjoy just the、uh, something about health potions and treasure chests and things that I guess I was raised to think of like items, things you can get, things you can hold. Love that stuff. It's just some, there's some kind of deep human appeal. I still have. I still hold on to. I don't know if this is gonna read very well. I'm not sure if it'll look like a health potion or just like a bottle of goo. But we'll see. Thank you, Zemi Wolf. I appreciate that. The goods is back. That was a good eventful Christmas. I hosted family dinner for the future in laws at my home for the first time. Fantastic. I hope that went well. Sounds like it did. It's good to be able to get along with your future in laws. It's not so good to not be able to get along with them, which is the you know, American trope, I guess. <laughs> Just in case it's not clear that this is a health potion, we're gonna, we're gonna go the extra mile here. And we're gonna put a little, a little heart here on the peg. Lovely. Love that. Love that. I love this stuff. I feel like there's just something about these kinds of designs, too, that,、um, like, I, mean, I don't know. We, we're trying to manufacture art for sale now, right? We're trying to, like, sell things. And I think that there's, there's definitely something to be said about the general appeal of,、um, small objects you can hold. Small, heavy things, things that like they contain a certain amount of power, you know. What am I gonna do? I guess gray, dark gray. Yeah, we got the highlights in there. I think dark gray is probably okay. It'll make it seem clear, I think. I think. Not sure.、Um, but just the the appeal of, of treasure, of things,、uh, items you can take. With you that help you on your journey and you know that kind of stuff. I grew up on video games, so it's all very a, a natural outgrowth of that, I guess.、Um, this cork turns it a little bit messy. All freestyle, so I'm not using a reference here. This is just my best attempt. Zagreus's skin color. I don't use him for the tag there.、Um, let me think about border. One second. I, got, I want to look something up real quick, see if I can come up with a good, a good border for this.、Um, what, what happens if I just type in power up and go look at images? Maybe power up glow. A good, a good glow color for this. But in order to get it proper, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to、um, I'm gonna give it a white glow and then I'm going to fade it down into blue and then ultimately black, I think. Maybe. Maybe not ultimately black.
like when you get a palm and stir it around, just like that. God, heck yeah, stuff. I love stuff. Stuff is so good. Give me that stuff. I wonder if I can fade it down to green. Would that be weird? Would that feel weird? Yeah, I think blue is probably better. I really like, I really like this this blue green though. Mm. I'm gonna do it. You cannot stop me, for I am the candy, the candy cane man. Or, right, whatever. I'm just saying words. I'm just making noises as my mouth flaps. Don't, don't at me. Nothing's real, and nothing matters. And you know what? We will finish this off for black. That's kind of nice. I like that. So I don't think I'm going to give this any more border. I think finishing it off with black is probably great. And we'll use this white to brighten the main colors and make it a little bit thicker. I like this. This was a nice one. I'm glad I made this. I'm going to probably do one more pancake after this. Um, and I think that one I will, like, abstract freestyle an excuse to turn my brain off. All right. Look at that Zagreus. Look at that Zag. Wow. Cool, huh? Look what I can do. I'm a talented boy. Ha <laughs> ha. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, phone go off. Somebody trying to talk to me. Hold up. Have you ever made an alabrige? Alabrige? I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, I'm gonna Google it though. I'll see what the heck you're talking about. Alabrige. Brightly colored Mexican folk art sculptures of fantastical creatures. First, Alabriges, along with the mention of the term, originated with Mexico City cartoniero Pedro Linares. Those are cool. They're gorgeous. Remind me of, uh, there's a sculptor on Instagram whose work I really like. <coughs> um, MP Galtheron. She's not Mexican. She's, I think she's French. She's a blonde white lady, white French lady. Um, but her work is, has similar like stippling patterns and stuff. These are really pretty. Yeah, these might be, one of these might be a fun thing to do. A fox or something like that, interesting. Keep that in the in my back pocket. 
Becca Roberts, that's a great question. Are you putting the white behind the bottle colors instead of regular uncolored batter to try and brighten the bottle colors when you flip the pancake over? Yes, there is a little bit of a brightening, like whatever color you fill and back your pancake with will ultimately, you can influence, it, it, it seeps into the other colors a little bit, just enough to make a difference. I'm gonna flip this, three, two, one. Hey, looks tasty. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Look, y'all, I know how to draw glass, kind of, sort of. Imaginary glass. You, you know what that is. It's painted. There's a power-up. Get. Equip. A delightful, extra, extra bit of health. I think it's like that, yeah. Yeah, take a picture of that. Haha. -ha. Who doesn't like having health potions to make it easier to fight bosses? That's my song. Yeah, that's it in focus. Cute little pancake. Cute little bitty pancake. Something you would buy from a potion seller. A shopkeep in a cavern. There you go, folks. Kool-Aid or cough medicine. I mean, you know, health potion, right? Same, same difference. All right. Ugh. Final pancake. Well, uh, I like your suggestion, and I will keep that in my back pocket. Um, and maybe I will, I don't know, maybe I'll do something like that. I think what I'm going to do instead uh, right now is um, last, last stream, I, I finished off with just a spiral. And I wasn't trying to draw a spiral, I just started to make marks on the griddle and see where my impulses took me while I talk. Um, and I really enjoyed doing it, and I'd like to do that kind of stuff more often, so I'm going to do something like that. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I don't know if I want to do another spiral necessarily, but... Um, I'm just going to kind of go with my impulses and get as close to my impulses as I can. I like this sort of, uh, I like to, to lean into the behavior of the batter, which is to say that it really likes to be very liquidy, you know? Um, it, uh, that's not a good word. Um, not liquidy, but round. It likes to be round. It likes to be curved. It likes to be um, circular. It, it pools in that liquid way. The surface tension always brings it together in this sort of... Um, it, it doesn't like right angles very much. And so, I found that you can just sort of play with... Uh, it, I, I, you can make your art look a little bit more intentional, I think, if you lean into that limitation rather than fighting against it. Rather than saying, you know, oh, uh, I really want to do a square here, but it doesn't want to be a square, so I'm going to try and force it into that shape and sculpt it and uh, do all kinds of tricks. And I mean, you can, you can do a lot with it, you know, you can certainly pull a lot off, but um, there's also something to be said for just being like, well, it wants to be round and oblong, so let me draw some round oblong nonsense and see what comes out. It's like, I don't really know what I'm doing right here. Maybe it's a snake, maybe it's a dragon. What have you. So there's a lot of fun ideas to explore um, just in the concept of impulse, impulse energy, creative impulse. I don't know how much y'all think about your impulses. Like, I mean, generally we sort of take them for granted, right? animistic here. This is wild. I like where this is going. Um, we kind of take our impulses for granted because we just have them and react to them and live with them and move along with them, but how often do we think about what they actually are? You know? Like, I can't honestly tell you right now that I'm making any sort of conscious decisions to do the lines and the dots I'm doing. Uh, 
Um, Cause I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm doing my very, very best to just sort of grab things and feel it out and, and not think. I'm trying not to think almost at all as I do these, these lines. Um, and that's why I can talk while I do this kind of style. That's why I can talk at length and muse about, you know, the nature of creativity and what have you. Because my impulses are just kind of doing their own thing. And I'm trying my best to get out of their way. Um, whatever they happen to be. And I'm not going to sit here and tell them that they're wrong or make them into something that they're not. I'm just kind of like, hmm, sure, some dots, why not? Dots feel good, right? Put some, some dots there. Patterns are nice, you know. It's nice to see something repeated something deeply satisfying to our monkey brains, I think. And it's like, oh, I see where you're going with this. And I approve. Different kinds of lines, different kinds of textures, you just kind of throw them all together. And the really interesting thing I've found is that the human brain does most of the legwork for you as an artist. Like, when I first started, like, I didn't go to art school. So I never had anybody holding my hand and teaching me how art worked. But I remember when I first started, I would put a lot of time and energy in trying my damnedest to make the portraits I was drawing and the, the images I was representing as quote-unquote perfect as they could be. And um, it, was, it never really felt right. Chubby snake. Uh, it never really felt right. Uh, and, and, and I would usually end up making things that I was less happy with at the end of the process, specifically because I was spending so much of my mental energy attempting to make it perfect that uh, I was getting in the way of it being good. And that's been one of the biggest things I've been having to learn as an artist is that, like, when you have less judgments, less assumptions about what a thing is supposed to look like, and you're blessed to be in a situation where you're free, like you're not going to be criticized or attacked or told that you're not good enough or lose clients or whatever if it's not quote-unquote accurate enough, then um, you make stuff that's really interesting. Things that are much more like, oh, I've never seen those elements arranged quite in that fashion before. That's pretty interesting. And that's kind of new. And uh, I start to realize that a lot of what makes it art fun has nothing to do with accuracy. And it has to do, I think, more with how, how able you are to get out of the way of your true creative voice, which I think is that little impulse that I'm playing with right now. It's just, sure, put it there, who cares, whatever, nothing's real. Time is a flat construct, we're in Carcosa. Everything is gonna decay and disappear. It's totally irrelevant. Who cares what it looks like? And for my part, I've certainly found that like the less I care about my output creatively. The less I'm like getting in my way and, and judging myself and criticizing myself and all that stuff, um, the better I feel about what I make, the better it tends to perform, the more honest and authentic I think it starts to feel. Like it's an expression of It's just a thing. <laughs> this is like a constellation. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. 
like it. I like it. Art is cool. There's actually a philosopher who I have a sort of cautious admiration for, named Rudolf Steiner, who he was. If you've ever heard of the term spirit science, there's actually a YouTube channel with that name that. Um, not all right. Uh, just the concept of approaching human spirituality with the um, scientific method in mind, using meditation techniques and ideas from the past, and just sort of approaching spirituality like it isn't some ineffable flim-flam thing that doesn't matter, but rather as a, a true human experience that is worth digging into and exploring on your own terms so you can better understand what it means to be a human. Um, he had the idea that art is one of our ways of... It's the easiest way we have of tapping into what could be considered a spiritual experience. Because when you really think about it, it's like, uh, I'm getting out of the way of something. Some collection of impulses is uh, manifesting in my brain when I'm in front of this particular arrangement of tools and symbols. And um, like I said, I'm not really thinking about it too much when I make these decisions, but something is making the decisions. And I think Steiner's point was really that um, that quote-unquote ineffable something is a little bit more important than we tend to assume. It's it's our spiritual intelligence. It's our connection to the divine. It's we've tuned our akashic antennas to the frequency of God or whatever, and um, you kind of go away and you just watch something happen in front of you. And the more tuned into it you are, the less like in control of it you kind of feel. You're like, okay, well. Let's make this thing. Let's make this weird, crazy thing that I have. N I had no idea what this was going to be when I sat down here. I had no idea what it was going to be. I just kind of started to make the shapes that felt good to me. And I mean, clearly at this point, it is a snake um, of some strange astrological kind. Um, it's interesting that how much this is turning out like one of those animals that Wella suggested without me really even trying was not my intention. I just kind of made some shapes and tried to articulate those shapes into something discernible. But, you know, you, you can go down a rabbit hole here and start to ask yourself really deep questions like, okay, well, if I wasn't really making the decisions there, because I don't feel like I was, then what was? I mean, you know, I think that it really... How much you want to you want to think of it as a spiritual experience comes down to, I think, your personal choice. I think that's a part of it too, right? Like, having a spiritual experience while you draw a picture of something, is, I think it has a lot to do with your perspective on what exactly, like whether or not you think of this as um, a sacred thing, whether or not you think of yourself as the arbiter of your decisions, or are you just along to watch? Um, I tend to think it's a little bit of both. And I also think that, um, I also think it kind of doesn't matter whether it's true or not. I think one of the number one things I took from exploring some of Steiner's ideas was that um, spirituality is a subjective thing, but that doesn't mean it doesn't matter. 
I don't need to sit here and prove to you that I'm channeling cosmic intelligence right now for me to feel like I am channeling cosmic intelligence right now. And it's that feeling more than anything else that influences what what behavior I actually take, how I articulate my wrist, how I decide to embellish um, an abstract shape. It's that feeling that I'm doing a thing that adds sort of the, it adds a tone. It adds a, an attitude, an energy to what you're doing that n dramatically changes the end result. Like if I was focused more on what I'm doing right now, um, I think we would have much less abstract shapes and colors and stuff like that. I probably would have noticed, I was like, oh, it's kind of a snake. And then I would have tried to draw it out immediately and done a lot of black line work. And um, it would have, not to say it would have been bad or worse or anything, you can't really quantify art in that capacity, but it would have been different. And so because of that inevitable difference, you would have ended up with, uh, I mean, you end up with a, with a meaningful, tangible, object, objective change in the way the world unfolds based entirely on how you choose to perceive the way you, what the way you are participating in that unfolding. If I say to myself, oh, I'm having a spiritual experience right now. It doesn't have to be mind-blowing. It doesn't have to be an earth-shattering, draw me to tears and everything. Like, spiritual experience is what you make of it, man. It is what it is. Horn snake. Um... The simple fact that I see it that way makes it so that, like, all of this comes out of me differently than it would have. Lord, I was born a rambling man. Um, what do we got here? Got some, I'm going to use some blues and some pinks, I think. We're going to do a couple of splashes of pink, and then I think the rest of it... weird one. Enjoying this. I think I'm going to end up doing more of these. Some very soft colors here. It's the trans flag colors I just noticed. Huh. Well, I guess I'll have that sometime. Excited to see how it looks with all the uh, technicolor residue around it. The stars I added. trans lives are ethereal. So when we start getting into the conversation about gender as a metaphysical concept, all gender exists on the astral plane. <laughs> it's all uh, a collective and agreed upon illusion. A series of habits and ideas that we get into to make our lives a little bit easier up not always panning out that way. We end up locked into rigid roles that may not be necessarily reflective of what our divine impulse wants us to do or say or be. And that can be a very uncomfortable place. And if you're living an inauthentic life because your impulse is at odds with what everybody around you says is good or polite or normal or acceptable, you're not living a very authentic life and 
you're going to be spending so much of your mental energy trying to change your natural impulse instead of harnessing your natural impulse, which I think is the big thing about spirituality and arts and creativity and being able to change the world around you into something more favorable for you and those you love. If you're all torqued up trying to force yourself into a box that you just don't fit in, well, you're not going to be very, very much used to the world, are you? Your, all your energy, all that, all that potential is going to be tied up in the fact that you don't feel right. And that you don't feel like you should be the way you are. That word should, big red flag. Big red flag in the spiritual community. Because you should not do anything. Should nothing. Nowhere, nowhere to be. Nothing to do. Nothing to accomplish. Living an authentic life is effortless. But only when you have the perspective that lets you realize that all you have to do is just be yourself. seems so hard because that's the big thing we all get taught. We get taught that we're supposed to be a certain way, that art is supposed to be a certain, that it's supposed to look a certain way. You're supposed to uh, make sure things are shaded properly and drawn properly and yada, 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 yada. And I get it to a certain extent. I get that there's something to be said for order and a baseline of rules because rules are something that can be that you can use rules as a tool to change yourself within the framework but you got to remember that they're just imaginary nonsense we made all of it up all of it up any word you have any concept you can chew on is is made up I think that those concepts are most useful when you remember that they are made up. Because then you have a little bit more power to change them, whatever they happen to be. Whether it's your rules for expressing your gender or rules for expressing yourself creatively. Like, which in, in a lot of cases, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, gender expression is just another form of human creativity. Um, you're creating yourself in that, your sense of self, your identity, your ego construct that you present to the world. You create that. You put it out there. And you say, this is me. But like, there is no you. You are a cosmic spark that happens to be conscious because it happens to be emerging from the interactions between a bunch of neurons in a meaty brain that happens to be attached to what you consider to be your body. But at the end of the day, you is an illusion produced by those neurons, by your memories and your hopes and your dreams and your experiences. It's all in your brain. And so the concept of you is very malleable in that sense. Um, that's one of the reasons why I think that uh, I think it's good to have the to, to have so many people in the world feeling courageous enough to come out and, and tell the world that they're transgender because um, for a long time, there hasn't been a network of solidarity that can make people feel safe enough to announce that in a hostile world that would, there's a lot of people out there that would kill people for that, still to this day. Plenty of folks, plenty of folks that think that it's wrong, that you should be ashamed, that you should be educated out of it, that you should be this, that, and the other thing. And ultimately, like, <sighs> when somebody challenges such an ingrained paradigm like that, when somebody challenges such a like deep-seated way to be in the world, um, it forces you to think about it. Like it forces you to grapple with a question that if you're privileged enough to not question your gender, you have to start thinking about, whoa, this thing that I've just taken for granted my whole life, what is it? What is it? How does it work? Why is it this? Why is it that? Why do some people feel this way? Why do some people feel that way? What must it be like to feel like you're the wrong gender? All these sorts of questions that never would have occurred to you if somebody hadn't come up to you and been like, Hey, I'm trans. 
and you see those people and, and there's a there are a lot of people out there who I think react to being challenged on such a ground level in their views uh, with hostility and ultimately that hostility I think is an outgrowth of the fear of grappling with the deep rooted assumptions about reality that a world where gender is flexible challenges entirely it, it just takes this whole thing we have about like how art is supposed to look and how people are supposed to act and how society is supposed to function and says we made it all up and there's a lot of people that are really uncomfortable with that idea because it takes all of these things and all the things we're complicit in it takes all the the the, the screwed up things and cycles that we take part in and says we can change it which ultimately means the responsibility is on us as individuals and a lot of people on a deep, without even being conscious of it, they reject that. They're like, nope, uh-uh, nope, the world works the way that I know it already works. And so um, anybody that tries to change that, we got to destroy them. So I don't know, that was a bit of a diatribe, but shout out to uh, transgender folks for challenging the gender paradigm because I think it's a really healthy thing in the long run and will make a lot of people ultimately reflect on why the hell they're participating in suicidal systems that make us all feel unfulfilled and want to die all the time. And I think that long term, that's a good thing. Let's see how this snake turned out. All right, Keith from Voltron Defender. I did say I was going to make that for you. I missed the first part of that conversation there, and I don't have my wireless mouse. Oh, that needs to cook a little bit longer anyway, so let me scroll up here. Boop, 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 Kind of like when you hear someone is vegan and they believe it's morally wrong to consume animal products, so that must inherently mean they judge you for your consumption habits. I missed context to what you were saying right there, because um, I was kind of on a, on a, a rant there. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what angle that was being responded to from, but uh, I think we're probably on the same page there. All right. Let's see how this weird. <laughs> it's gender time. <laughs> Y'all ready for this super bizarre abstract constellation snake thing I made? Shutting down the conversation instead of engaging with a new perspective. Yes, yes. It's not, it's not a great way to make the world a better place. All right, here we go, folks. Let me cut to the overhead here. Uh, one, boop, 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 three, two, one. Whoa. Weird. So strange. I like it. It's chaotic. Strange space snake. Uh, you know, I think I might just add a little bit. This feels like... There we go. Makes it look a little bit less chubbly. That line there, that doubling back over there. Becca Roberts, shame is the enemy of progressive conversation. I agree with that. Happy with that. I will make that Keith from Voltron, legendary defender. Because I said I believe on the last stream that I would do it today if you drop back in. And you did! And I am a man of my word. And this will be my final pancake. Keith. Voltron. Hi, Keith. You're so handsome. Add to photos. He's just like... He's, he's just like a, a lower resolution Zagreus. With less spiky hair.
a worm on a string. <laughs> uh, yes. Indeed, indeed. One celestial worm on a string pancake. Uh, this one I'm going to have to end up putting it on a wax paper real quick, too. I like this. This will be a nice piece. Weird pieces today. Different sizes, different shapes, different impulses. We got a potion bottle. We got a Zagreus. We got a celestial worm on a string. Jeremy, you're always making me laugh. Shout out to Jeremy, Anime STL there in the comments. He is our, uh, our, he's been helping us produce our live streams and help us do outreach, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I hope, hope we can pay you a bunch of money sometime. <laughs> um, which reminds me, Jeremy, at some point, I, I want to talk to you and Wella. Uh, there's a couple people I want to talk to about this uh, weird idea I got brewing in my brain, but I'm not going to talk much more about it on the stream right here. Just remind me to holler at you. Um, okay. Well, I'm already supposed to hang out with you tonight, Wella. We're going to do Magic the Gathering. All right, Keith from Voltron. Let me scroll back up. Let me make sure I remember this person's name. Because um, Brittany Gilstrap. Brittany, this is for you, my friend. Shout out to Brittany. Thanks for dropping into the stream. Thanks for coming back. How about Keith from Voltron? Anime eyes. You got to get those anime eyes. You got to get them sharpened. Gotta get them pointy. Gotta get that line work. Gotta get that tapering. Gotta make that anime guy have real pretty anime eyes. Like that, folks. <laughs> I'm in a good mood because my uh, my last three pancakes were all good, and that's a really great feeling. Like, and, and not just good, but like, uh, I think notably good. A lot of times I phone it in. And even on times that I do phone it in, I can still like make good pieces. But um, it's really nice when I'm happy with a piece. Because that doesn't always happen. A lot of times I'm just like, eh, it's done, whatever. Because this is such a unforgiving art medium. There's not a lot of you're doing things, you can't render something for hours over and over and over again and build it up into something awesome. You kind of have to make it good on the first try or else start it over from scratch. You can do a little bit of touch-ups like I did on that celestial string worm. But even that, it, you can only do so much with that. So like if you really mess up the proportions on somebody's face or something like that, you couldn't tell because of the way the cake was colored or whatever. It just, it's a nightmare. And so on a day like this, I'm very grateful to have been able to make some pieces that I'm pleased with. Let's do justice to their subject. Amazing how subtle little things like that can be. Hope I have enough purple for this. Oh, oh, geez, I made this. I'm making this dude's face a little bit too big. short make pancakes that are too big nothing's real Chin low enough, I don't think. 
Keith. Let me struggle here, Keith. That's a little bit better. Very distinctive jaw shape. Big ol' collar. I'm gonna use all my damn colors on this dude. I'm gonna hit him too big. But you know what? Like I said before, literally, who cares? Probably Hank. Hank will be like, dude, <laughs> resin is expensive. Oh, but it's so beautiful, Hank. Right, let me get that white here. All right. So I'll move that shadow in. Animes. My anime eyes. color for this. I barely have enough damn color for his eyes. Let's see here. Get some of this shading. Get his face. Pocket shading zone. She doesn't have a ton of uh, a ton of layers. It's a simpler character design than some of their other stuff I've done. Drag Race had a lot of a lot of different colors going on, so this is a lot simpler. This, this is going to be interesting. For the record, this is going to be the last pancake of the stream. Got some other stuff I have to do on the studio today. Um, but I felt really good about it. 
For those of you that are joining us for the very first time, this is the Joy of Pancakes, a thrice weekly live stream series where one of the Dane Cakes artists, not always set in stone, but usually it's me on Mondays, um, and sometimes on Wednesdays, not if, if not Dana, and then it's Ben on Fridays. Um, but basically, one of the Dane Cakes artists comes in and makes beautiful pancake art designs for a couple of hours, three times a week. And just hangs out and talks about whatever we want to talk about and solves all the problems in the world. And occasionally we take requests from the chat. Um, we also have a Sunday request stream that is explicitly for taking requests from the chat. So if you want to check that out, get a pancake of whatever you want made, tune in on Sundays at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, otherwise, if you just like hanging out with us and listening to us talk about what, we, what we're into, Joy of Pancakes is a place to be. All the pieces that we make on the stream here, usually the ones we really like. You know, if I mess something up and I'm not a fan of it, then we might toss that or compost it or whatever. But um, most of the pieces that we make on these streams end up going into our workshop to get preserved. And if you look on the wall behind me, you'll see a bunch of pieces of art. Those are all pancakes that we made and preserved here in our workshop in St. Louis. perfecting this process for a couple of years now, and um, you can get any of these pieces, and we will ship them to you wherever you happen to be. If you would like to inquire about purchasing one of these pieces, you can reach out to us, reach out to Hank at DanCakes.com, or check out the DanCakes.com store, so we've already got made over there, and um, you can also commission your own original pieces, right? Uh, a piece of whatever, whatever you want us to make. You can send us an image of your loved one, your pets. The sky's the limit, really. It's it's anything you can imagine, uh, as long as it won't get us in trouble. That's the that's the big caveat. <laughs> I don't want people to get too excited and then try and have us do something awful. Um, and I'm like, sorry, bro. I like having income. And this would jeopardize that. Um, but, um, yeah. We really love being able to do these. And if you are interested in helping to support us, helping to support us in our creative endeavors, helping to keep us going so we can keep doing the stream, help us put food on the table in these difficult times. It's been a very hard year for an events company, um, which is what we used to be. Now we think of ourselves as a media company more, but we would be really, really appreciative if you would take a look at our Patreon and see the call to action there on the side of the stream here. Um, support us there and you can get lots of cool stuff, freebies and pancake requests and access to behind the scenes stuff. And I'm gonna start blogging on there, I think because it's one of the things that I do best. Um, I don't always have a, a dual creative outlet for it. Um, we'd be super stoked to have you, though. I need to take a quick break here and mix a little bit more of this dark purple color. I hope I, I don't completely screw up this dude's hair color. That should be enough. Let me see. I need a cap. Shake it up. There it is. Just off to the side where we keep all of our pancake tools. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. That was a 
just about exactly the color I need. Just about. I mean, it could be a little bit better, I think, but this will do. Keith from Voltron, how you doing? Gosh, I hope I mixed enough. Have to find out. There's the, the moment of truth in the interior fill on this hair mass. I think I've got enough better. Sometimes it's hard to tell, especially with a big fill area like this. But I think. slightly larger bottle aperture so this is not taking quite as long it is a little purpler than i would have hoped but whatever it's Perfect. All right. Let's blast this nonsense. Yeah, dog. <clears throat> so, once again, Patreon, please check the Patreon out. Even if you can't donate or can't support us, tell somebody about it. Like, literally, anything, anything you can do to help us out would be absolutely uh, wonderful. Uh, we have pancake art equipment. You can get this griddle, you can get the spatula and these Dan Cakes bottles, as well as these expansion little batter pens here. Um, all of this is available on our website, dancakes.com. You can order the gel colors we color the batter with. We have a, a tutorial series that you can, you can learn how to make pancake art, and we also do live and digital classes to teach anybody how to make pancake art anywhere in the world. Um, we do commission pancakes. We sell preserved pieces. We do video commissions. We do all kinds of pancake art-related nonsense. Um, just, just really, we're just throwing it all at the wall and seeing what sticks, so... And if you think of anything that you'd be interested in having us help you with, please reach out. We'd love to work with you, whoever you happen to be. We do these live streams a couple times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays and Wednesdays, it's usually at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Fridays, it's uh, Ben takes those, and he usually does them a little bit later. What's going on here? There we go. Uh, he likes to start his at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time, so he's a bit of a night boy. Uh, but all of them are great. We make awesome pieces, and they usually end up on our dancakes.com store. We're getting caught up on preserving pieces right now. But otherwise, um, it's coming up to the new year, and 2020 was kind of a, a shit show. So <laughs> um, we're looking forward to seeing if next year will be a little bit better, and I hope it is for you as well. Get Keith pried off the griddle here. Also, uh, if this is your first time with Joy Pancakes, at the end of the stream, before I sign off, I move the griddle out of the shot and I bring over the pancakes that I made on the stream. So you can see them one more time before we uh, stick them in the freeze dryer and start preserving them. So, again, if you're interested in any of these pieces, please reach out to us. Reach out to Hank at dancakes.com or check out the website in a couple weeks' time to see if you can snag the piece. 
we tend to uh, expedite the preservation process if somebody wants one of the pieces we make on the stream. So uh, if you reach out and work out a price with us, we can make it sooner than it normally would be made. There's a backlog of pieces in our workshop. Here we go. Keith from Voltron. Three, two, one. There he is. Handsome anime eyes. Handsome anime eyes. All right, folks, that's the last pancake of the stream. I'm going to plate this and bring the other pancakes over into the shot. Oh, looks good up here. Whoop. Boom. Delicious. Whoop. Slide this out of the way. Good haul today. Very happy with how these turned out. Very good haul today. Good pancakes. What a fun gig. Put the egg race over here a bit more. There we go. That's kind of, that'll be nice for the thumbnail or whatever. What do you think, folks? Is it, is it fun? Am I good at this? Myself a little photo. Send these to good old Jeremy. Slap them bad boys on the web. Did I take a picture of the Voltron one? I did not. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to cut to the wide here for a moment so I can do my sign off deal. Folks, as usual, I am super grateful to everybody for tuning in, checking out the stream, hanging out with me, keeping me company, giving me suggestions, enjoying what I do, and listening to me ramble about all the stuff I'm passionate about. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll join us again on a future episode. Come check out our request stream on Sundays. Support us on Patreon. Do all that good stuff. Uh, and as usual, always remember the Dan Cakes motto. Some steaks are delicious. Until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, wherever you happen to be. Hope your new year kicks ass. And uh, I hope that you're safe and healthy and warm wherever you are. So thanks for watching. We'll see you around.